You've waited a lifetime to look better and feel better, and now here's your chance. Fitness Friday on WNDB. Call 239-0033 and have your questions answered on health, fitness, and a better life. Fitness Friday is brought to you by Bodies by Tasso and Company, 1140 West Granada Boulevard in Ormond Beach. And now, here's your host, Tasso Kiriakis. Welcome to Fitness Friday. It's great to be back in the studio again with you, Dave. The I'm walking excited. wounded we have here. Yeah, man, I'm telling you. You know, you, you don't realize how much surgery takes out of you until you oh, start yeah. to try. Like, yes, I had a pretty big day because I went to see my doctor, and then, you know, of course, I had to do my rehab and uh, just just getting things done and just everyday things that you do. You don't realize that, it's re you know, when the doctor tells you, hey, listen, for three weeks you're sort of like uh, you're locked in lockdown. You can't go anywhere, and you go like uh, – Go, really three weeks are you crazy you know i, I gotta get out and do things and, oh, you know, know you get up that first week and you go like uh oh i hurt <laughs> you take your pill you're like sure i'm on the couch with my knee elevated <laughs> i got real comfortable on the couch when i had my car yeah accident. it's easy to do I, you know i'm 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 fortunate that i've uh, i've actually lost uh five pounds while i've been home because i've been eating really really good okay that's good like yesterday billy gahagan picked me up to take me to the doctor and uh, it was the first time I've had sweet tea since I had my surgery. Oh, boy. Yeah, that was a treat. We went and ate a Chipotle, so it was neat. You know, Dave, I was, uh, I was surfing the, uh, the web last night on YouTube, and I came across a very interesting, you know, uh, Dr. McCullough, who's uh, been in the news a little bit with us in the, in the Ormond area because, right. of, uh, because of the stand with what Jim had going on with water purification and chlorine oh, yeah. and, and uh, several different issues in regards to nutrition up in that area. Um, you know, he, um, I, I was, I was happened to be on his site just because I was looking for some, some information because I'm, um, I'm creating a model that, you know, maybe we'll talk a little bit about today. I think it's a little premature to talk about, but you know, we, um, I was, I was looking through there and I found a, a, a YouTube video he posted two years ago. Jim did. Uh, no, no, no. This oh, is Doc, Dr. McCullough. Oh. And you know, Dr. McCullough's most of his stuff talks about health and it talks mm. about Nutrition, and that's pretty much what we know him as a very activist from the standpoint of nutrition. And, uh, and it was Dr. Mercola um, speaks on super slow training. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting because really what he did was he talked about two-thirds of the triangle that we talk about that is synergy. You know, we have this synergy triangle that we talk about that really comes into whatever your fitness goals are, whatever your health goals they are, they come into the solution. They are the solution. They are, are what we go through as the, the formula. And, and, the, and for those of you who are just catching the Fitness Friday show, it's brought to you by Bodies by Tasso and Company. 672-6464 is the phone number. We're in Ormond Beach. You can call right now. We are still uh, running our promotion of start your membership for $5 and have your monthly dues be thirty nine fifty a month. Now that's, now, that's $20 less than our normal what you would call our concierge membership, the membership that is where we service you. We are there to set your seat heights. We have a program called the Smart Start Program. Normally, when you enroll in that body coach program, it's a one ninety nine enrollment fee, and it's fifty nine fifty a month. And uh, but during the summer, we do a promotion, and we do it for two reasons. Number one is to drop the investment so that people can actually see that there is a difference. Because let's face it. In the world of fitness, we're competing with the several different models that talk about $10 a month, 24-hour access. And, you know, they, they give you a solution, and they give you that they give you the machines, the tools to do that with. But, you know, uh, I'm not very handy. It's like uh, you, might as well, you might as well give me a, um, you know, an, an, an MR, M, MNR spectrometer uh, rather than, than uh, saws and nails and hammers to try and build a, 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 a a bookcase because I'm going to get about as far with either one of them. But, you know, you've got to have the knowledge and how to apply that, and that's where we come in. So we want you to see the body's difference. Number number two is we want you to commit a, a reasonable amount of time, which the, the, the time we ask you to commit, com commit for is a 12-week 12, 12 period. That's 12-week, not 12-month. 12 it's three months at that 39.50 rate. And if you like the club, then you can stay. Um, the, the thing that we ask is that you do, because of the nature of how we do our business, is that you do call and set up an appointment to go by for a trial workout and for an evaluation because we want to make sure we set that program up. Most people, when they go into fitness centers, if there is an introductory process, it's like, okay, here's the machines we're going to teach you. 
uh, come back in we'll teach you these machines we try and we try and customize it a little bit closer to what you want and then we have our smart start program so you get our smart start program you'll get our fitness on demand which is uh, is just nothing more than our, our uh, group exercise program on your schedule 122 different classes and you can take one of the pre-scheduled classes or you can come in at two o'clock in the afternoon when nothing's there and say hey me and my daughter or me and my husband or me and my friend we want to do this class and you do it and it goes everything from your pilates to your yoga to your strength classes so it's five dollars down and 39.50 a month now that now part of that solution i'm talking to you about is is that we have three components of it we have this synergistic triangle that gets you results one plus one equals three you know kind of thing (laughs) Uh, the, 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 the sum of the parts is greater than any one of the individuals will give you. And, you know, there are several studies that show, you know, Dr. Wayne Westcott just published a, a beautiful study in uh, the Journal of Exercise Science that said, listen, here's definitive data that shows that we must combine good eating habits with good strength training. So now we come back to that synergistic triangle, which is number one, we want to build lean body tissue. We want to build muscle mass. Why do we want to build that? And that mu- word muscle scares the heck out of women. Why do we want to build it? Because it raises your metabolic energy. It, uh, it, it, it raises your level to increase the calories you expend during the day. If you're a runner, you're going to go out and you're going to run a mile. And a mile is roughly worth 100 calories. Well, if you're trying to get a weight loss program going and you're going to rely on walking and running, then for every mile, approximately every mile you cover, you're going to burn 100 calories. So if you want to create a 500 calorie a day deficit, you're going to deprive yourself of food, number one. And then you're going to go out and try and expend an extra three, four, five hundred 500 calories of energy. So let's say you do that. Well, the day that it rains and you can't go out and do your walk or run, you don't expend those calories. Right. But when you build lean body tissue, when you build you know, two to three pounds of lean body tissue, you're, you've increased your metabolic rate by 100 calories a day. So just as long as you keep the maintenance of that once every four to six days that you do some strength training to maintain that muscle to, that you got, what happens is is you're burning it at rest. So you've got the equivalent of going out and walking or running a mile every day without even getting off your couch. So this aids the process. It, it, number, w- number one, it aids the process that you burn more calories. Number two, it aids the process that you can eat 100 more calories. And you don't have that deprivation because I'm very, uh, in the last year and a half, just all the studies, although I am a, an advocate of intermittent fasting, mm-hmm. I, um, I believe that there are times when fasting is very, very important for hormonal balance and clean, cleansing the system. Uh, and, and when I talk about these, these, um, these fastings, I don't mean with cayenne pepper and some of these other things that you see as products. I think uh, I look at it from the standpoint of the health aspect of it. Uh, when I believe that low calorie weight loss diets are are detrimental to the body and changing and getting that metabolism back up to that high energy expenditure. You know, the the European Journal of Applied Physiology has just investigated the difference in strength training regimens on resting energy. Mm -hmm. And they looked at even set training, they looked at high intensity one set training, and they showed that in both cases, there was an increase in lean body tissue at a, at a, a, and, and, the, the calories that we expend. So there is that first, that first side of that synergistic triangle. The second side is we want to do aerobic, moderate aerobic activity. But again, I come back to this contrasting of the elite marathon athlete versus the elite sprinter. If we look at Flojo and we look at the woman that won the New York Marathon, and you were to look at those bodies aesthetically, you'd say, well, I want to look like Flojo. I want that good musculature. I want... I want that bright color, that bright skin. I don't want to look drawn. You know, when you mm-hmm. run, when you do a lot of aerobic exercise, there's a huge amount of oxidative stress on the mm-hmm. body. Oxidative stress is the same thing that stress does to us when we have when we have a hectic day at work. And so we're not able to recover from that if we don't expend energy. But there's a point where you expend too much energy. This whole thing that we'll talk about in the big triangle in just a moment. So what happens is is when we do short burst type of training, these intervals, which we call, you know, we call uh, uh, burst training with our SIFIT system, you teach the system to recover because of the, what the anaerobic threshold in hitting it does chemically to the body, hormonally to the body. Well, this is something that occurs naturally to every sprinter that does their training regimen. So that's wind what, sprints. In right, that's right. The wind short, sprints. yeah, the short burst. You know, you look mm-hmm. at uh, and locally, you look at people who are great sprinters in high school. They've maintained a fitness level, maintained some level. You know, a, a guy like a principal like Earl Johnson looks still looks great, 
you know uh doesn't look worn down you know you don't get that you know the one of the reasons i have the wear and tear on my knee to have to have a knee replacement surgery is all the running i did 14 15 miles a day is you know trying to stay in shape for wrestling for mm-hmm. those years of college so those those aspects of it we have to be very conscious of that we want to so those first two points being put into the equation and the third part is healthy eating well you know of course I, i'm working on some stuff so i go to dr mercola's site who's a noted supplement and um you know just overall health and environmental health type of person and here's this st- statement he makes on a uh, 25 minute statement on super slow training and i go like man i said this is this is remarkable this is awesome i mean I, here is a, a authority from a whole nother field who's very obviously very empirical in, in the way he approaches uh, exercise. And he, you know, one of the interesting things that he said at the outset of that speech was he says, I don't want, I hope you will benefit and not make the same mistakes I've made over the last 20 years. And it was interesting that he talked about oxidative stress like we talk about it. Mm-hmm. He talked about you do not need these long, tedious 40-minute bouts. You know, the, the federal government tells us that we should get four to six days of 40 to 40 to 50 minutes of uh you know walking a day and and uh and 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 that's true to a point but it's not true when there's not a balance of everything else and when we see people that that's all they do is walk they neglect one of the main parts of strengthening their their frame again going back to this fact that 65 percent of the people who are in convalescent homes are not there because they've broken a bone or have an illness or anything like that they're there because they didn't maintain strength they were they were victims of sarcopenia Mm. sarcopenia is the wasting of muscle tissue and that happens from that use it or use it type of scenario so we want to make sure that we we teach you that when you come to bodies you know we're trying to teach you that what we can do for you is to make sure that you're successful in your program so strength training again increases the number of calories you burn uh following a workout as well you know when you're walking you're just burning your calories while you're walking so and and we we've looked at over and over and we have a philosophy that we do call knowledge training philosophy and that knowledge training philosophy says this we're going to perform one set of every exercise and we're going to form it to perform it to volitional fatigue well again going back to this dr mercola presentation that he had uh, last night on or was two years old but i found it last night on youtube i thought it was very interesting because he talked about the how people fear intensity but absolutely intensity and hard work is one of the main factors that has to contribute so that adaptive changes occur to the body and it's what we've talked about we use that we've used that parameter of talking to, about it i don't know parameter is the right word the, the we've used that metaphor of talking about it to say hey listen you know if you worked at the same job every day as you worked what you would want to do is make more money because you become more productive at the job well our body's the same way is that what i uh, should have been doing here all along all these years <laughs> i've been here <laughs> well i hopefully you've you've <laughs> progressed i mean so so but you know the thing about it dave is that you you want to you want to make the body adapt and you mm-hmm. want to make and your body adapts every time you do something mm-hmm. But here's the reality of it. If, if the first time I go to lift 100 pounds, I'm not strong enough. So it takes 100 muscle fibers of my body to lift that 100 pounds. Well, as I do that 100 pounds the first time, yeah, I took 100 pounds. I took 100. The next time, it maybe only takes 95. The next time, it only takes 90. So if, I, if I'm like most people in fitness centers, that six weeks down the road, I still have the same weight, or I'm nowhere near my potential with the weight that I'm lifting, what happens is, is now I'm using 30% of my muscle to do the work. So guess what? 70% of your muscle is going backwards mm-hmm. because it's not being challenged. So mm-hmm. when you, and he does a great job of talking about, he sort of mixes up the, the I, I'm really going to try and get in, in touch with him because I understand he does vacation uh, during the winter down in Daytona, down in Ormond Beach, and I really would like to have him come by because he really has mixed two concepts. He's mixed the concept of the Arthur Jones concept, which is the, foundational concept of what we do the knowledge training principles he's he's mixed that concept of um doing eight to 12 repetitions with the concept of super slow and maintaining that eight to 12 repetitions Mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is if you're doing eight to 12 repetitions and a 10 count positive lift and 10 count letting it down you're probably actually doing too much exercise Mm. and you're not at a threshold enough where you're working yourself so, you know, we, when we take a person, 
we look at time under intensity is what we look at as opposed to repetitions. Mm -hmm. So we look at it from a standpoint of lift the weight on 10 counts, let it down on a 10 count, and when you're working as hard as you can work there, okay, then what happens is if you get to a minute and a half or two minutes of being able to lift that weight in good quality form, you need to raise the weight. Well, that's mm -hmm. the equivalent to, to his eight reps mm -hmm. kind of situation. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, uh, and again, those of you who are out there training for 15 or 20 reps, again, you look at that, and really if you look at the time frame, you're looking at a 60 to 90 second time frame. We know that the muscle responds best in a 60 to 90 second time frame. So let's go back to the point of where Dr. Mercola again talks about another concept that's, that's uh, very, very foundational to what we teach, and that is the concept of keeping your form and losing range of motion and still continuing exercise. Because when most people work out, they have the mentality of, if I don't get the weight up, I've either got to cheat to get the weight up, mm -hmm. or it's, I just need to quit because it's not mm -hmm. a productive exercise. Well, the way a muscle fiber functions is that it contracts 100% every time it's called on to contract, even if it doesn't have to use its whole potential. Again, going back to the example of our muscles can lift 100 pounds, but we only try to lift 10 pounds. Well, guess what happens? The body's physiology contracts exactly the same way. Now, what happens is it fatigues, and you hopefully involve other muscle units, other mus muscle motor units, when you do the next exercise or the next repetition. But when, when you go through and you say do 15 exercises, all 15 of them are perfect, and you mm -hmm. got them all the way up, you probably left some, some energy on the table that you didn't expend. But let's say you had eight reps, you couldn't get it any further up, and you continue on to do a ninth and a tenth and an eleventh and a twelfth, and you keep your form. You don't cheat. You take momentum out of it. Mm -hmm. And again, going back to Dr. Mercola's, and he, you know, he really did good research on this. He, he made the comment, he says, most people fear injury in working out. <clears throat> but if you move slowly, and if you keep your form, you will maintain an ability to keep your strength moving in the right mm -hmm. direction. So, so I, I, I like that he talked about that. He made another comment that, I, that we've made on this show uh, several times, and that is that, let's face it, exercise in of itself. When people come to me and they say to me, you know, Tasso, I, 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 I eat good. I just, I just don't exercise. And they're, they're 30, 40 pounds overweight. You know, I, I want to tell them, I, you're just fooling yourself. You're just trying to rationalize. And, you know, break that word up, rational lies. We, we <laughs> accept rational lies. We rationalize lies. why we shouldn't eat better. We rationalize why we shouldn't start exercise programs. But we keep fooling ourselves because we, we've been ingrained into a society that doesn't want to make commitments that, that challenge us at times. And, and listen, whether you say, I'm going to take this on an all or nothing kind of let me change my life, or you take and say, listen, I'm on a journey that's a nice, smooth, slow journey. I, I, that's one of the big questions I want to ask a person when they come into a program because both answers are right. The guy that says, I want to stop smoking and I'm going to do it right now and just stop and smoking today, well, his answer is just as right if he'll stick to his commitment as the person says, look, you know, I smoke 20 cigarettes a day. I want to take every day and I want to, every other day I want to cut back a cigarette. He has a plan at least. The, 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 the overall plan has to be to improve every day. But we have to take our discipline and our skill level and our focus level and our motivation level, and we have to put it within the confines of what we can adhere to and feel like successes. We, we do not want to put ourselves in a situation where we walk in and say, I want to do 50 pounds in 50 days, and it's not a realistic picture. Because, you number one, you get discouraged because you fail. And let's face it, in, in the exercise arena, in the fitness program arena and what goes on behind the clo behind the doors of fitness centers whether it's gold's gym bodies by tossing ymcas planet fitnesses whatever is out there as a fitness franchise in our area that, that what goes on behind those doors is hugely failing people if it wasn't we would see that this huge expansion of these beautiful facilities that we have that pop up all around the country we'd have a fit population but we're still ranking one of the worst countries hmm. in overall health. Why? Because we have not tied our health and fitness habits into our lifestyle that changes us. 
For some reason, we think that exercise and strength training is something that belongs only to athletes and only to strong people. When the, when the group that benefits the most, the absolute most, the two groups are going to benefit the absolute most from strength and resistance training is our aging population that begins to change this the, uh, disease continuum that we've talked so much about, and the youth, because we now know that osteoporosis is not something you get. Listen, folks, if you got diabetes and you went last week to your doctor and you said, oh, my doctor told me I have diabetes, I've contracted diabetes, you didn't contract diabetes. You developed it because of your lifestyle that you've lived for the last 20 years. Osteoporosis is a childhood disease that manifests itself in adulthood, and it's more pronounced for women. If you get out and you get active, and this is where we're going to see a horrible fallout to our kids that are, are playing their game pieces, you know, their, their video, games. video games, that don't have the benefit of going out and running around. Mm-hmm. They're not doing, you know, I, I, I may be wrong, but I believe there's been a huge cutback on, on, on doing the, the uh, what's, what's the name of what I want to talk about, the, um, the, the fitness, the President's Fitness Challenge uh, is not done very frequently at the school levels anymore, which to me is an amazing injustice to our kids. But it's come because we don't want kids to be embarrassed. Listen, I, I was embarrassed as a, as a 10 or 12 year old because I couldn't climb the rope, you know, oh, at I Seabreeze know. Junior High yeah. School. And I, you know, here was Kenny Gill, and man, Kenny Gill could do it without his feet and sitting in a perfect L. And he would just, he would just fly up I that, he, that he, rope. He'd just fly up the rope. Well, you know, by the time, by the time I got to college, you know, the first day I went to college to wrestle and practice in college, we had to climb the ropes. Well, let me tell you what. Sheer embarrassment is what got me as far oh. up the rope as got me because I had that rope wrapped around my leg, and I stepped on top of it, and I would pull my knees up, and I'd pull up, and I'd reach up and grab it, and I used my whole body. By, by my junior year of college, I could go up simultaneous ropes with no feet. No feet at I all. I could have two parallel ropes. I could go boom, wow. boom, boom like a little monkey. I'm impressed. Okay. That why, why does that come? Because I accepted a challenge. And sometimes we take this, this self-esteem issue. The way to build self-esteem is not to falsely build it because we're building a house of cards. So when we take a kid that gets involved in a strength training program, and let's, again, let's go back to the children as, 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 a, as a group, a component group. It, and we take those kids, and we start to change their eating a little bit, and we take them into the thing. Listen, the one area, listen, if we would have gone into a gym when I was 12 years old, because I weighed a, you know, I had to wear the husky stuff, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't, mm-hmm. I wasn't the good-looking was athlete. I wasn't, time. yeah, I wasn't like the surfer kid that was in really good shape that could run the six hard, hundred-yard dash and they could do fifteen chin-ups. I could do one chin-up. So, so what, what would happen, Dave, is, is if we would have gone into the gym at that time, and we would have gotten on a machine or something like that, I, I'd, I'd have performed pretty well. That would have raised my self-esteem. You know, I, I have a bunch of our altar boys from, from St. Demetrius working out during the summer with us. Mm-hmm. And I've seen the self-esteem of a couple of them build, build because, you know, they, 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 uh, aren't, they've never done anything fitness-wise. But you see them, they carry themselves with better posture. Well, let's flip over to the female side. The female side needs that strength training. We are certainly more open-minded about allowing our children to participate right. in activities and sports these days. But we must address the need not for one rep demonstration of strength. We don't need a testosterone hour where it's how much weight you can lift. We need proper form. We need proper position. And, and we need all those things combined. Pace, posture, progression, so that we challenge the body and we cause it to change. All the things you do at Bodies by Justice. That's right. And I want to remind everybody before we go to Jim, our caller, $5 begins your membership. $5 down, $39.50 a month. There is a $20 card fee. It is a three-month commitment because we think in three months, between all the programs we go, got going on, we have going on, not got going on, we have going on, <laughs> our appointment with fitness, which gives you one-on-one accountability. If you don't show up for your workout, we call you and say, hey, Dave, where were you today? The, the, the Smart Start program, which takes you and holds your hand through learning the machines and getting those machines to be a little more specific to your fitness needs and history, our our fitness on demand program which is gives you 120 different aerobic classics fitness classes at your schedule with the best instructors in the world 
though we think that you're going to see a body's difference you're going to see why bodies isn't a ten dollar a month club or a 24 hours because it's great to have the tools but you got to have the knowledge and the applicability of that knowledge and now let's go to jim jim thanks for calling in Hey, Tasso. Uh, yeah, I've been following Dr. McCuller for a while reading his website. Uh, one of the reasons I got involved was uh, he's very anti-fluoridation. But, uh, and his comments on health and that seem to be on mark. And uh, just like I went to your Dr. Pompa uh, website, uh, that boy's got a right, too. No, yeah, and, they, they uh, really... The thing is, McCuller said he always thought he was in good shape until he started this first concept of uh, training. And uh, he says he's kicked it up a notch, uh, a couple notches, and he really feels that he's in the best shape of his life. So, well, I, I got to tell you, I am. Uh, I'm going to make every effort. I don't. I, I know Mitch has. Um, Mitch at loves Whole Foods has seen him before, and I, I'm going to make every effort I can to get in contact with him and invite him to to my club um, when he comes down again. Because I, I I love you know I love conversing with people. You know Daniel Papa. I, I I treasure the 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 friendship I've developed with Daniel Papa and a lot of the physicians, Josh Axe, and guys that I've met um, because of this interest. And it's a tremendous interest. It's a, it's a it's a new it's a new horizon, Jim, and how physicians are practicing um, their their practices of practicing medicine. And and here's what it boils down to. And what I see is a very distinct difference. And I see it with um, Dr. Michael Demayuga, you know, Dr. Michael Demayuga, who I had on the show several weeks ago. And, and, and listen, I know he's not the only one doing this, so I don't mean to slight people that are out there doing it. But this, this whole movement of functional medicine that they're doing is very found, foundational. You know, our, 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 we, we've, we've fooled ourselves into a, a paradigm of, of a medical practice that says, I'm going to go to my medical doctor. I'm going I'm to sit for an hour and 15 minutes in his waiting room because he's that important, that good, and that smart. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to get 90 seconds of his attention after his nurse spends three minutes with me doing my vitals. And he's going to pop in and he's going to, you know, how you feeling? And he's going to do his little things. He's going to feel here and there. You go a couple of moons and he's going to say, and, and, then, and then I'm going to go out the door and I'm going to have a little magic white sheet as my prescription for whatever ails me. And, you know, we, we're the, the first thing that most of them will do is what are they going to do? If we go sick, they're going to give us an antibiotic, right? And, and the antibiotic yeah. kills, kills the good probiotics that we have. And, you know, it's amazing how marketing is, how now we got Aaron Andrews and all these people promoting probiotics. Well, you know, probiotics have been an essential part of foundational nutrition for, for so many years, you know. And, and so, you know, we go and we, I see this practice and getting back to the functional medicine practices. I see these guys like Papa that they come down and they go, okay, now, you know, Jim, uh, you have high blood pressure and you have this and we've looked at this and, um, you know, really what we need to do is we need to look at what's causing this. And and where most doctors make a diagnosis and give you that magic white sheet of paper, these functional physicians, and again, I see more and more of them. Uh, uh, I had a very great experience in, with my new insurance policy going to see Jesse Casimiras. You know, I, I was able to sit and converse with him and talk to him and ask him questions. And it, it wasn't a, a prescription type of thing. It was, hey, let's get this blood testing. Let's test for this toxicity. Let's test for this inflammation that that may be going on and let's find out what's going on and and i think that's a very interesting scenario because now we see them shifting back to what the old house visit medicine was where they came and they said all right let's find out what you're eating let's find out what you've been exposed to um you know when i just moved into my my house that i remodeled i i absolutely tore my my whole bathroom out and built a new bathroom people said why did you do that I said because when they came in, they found mold behind there. We said, well, just put some Clorox on that mold. It doesn't do any good. No. It doesn't do any good. It doesn't get rid of it. You know, you had to take out all, of, all everything that was in there to get it out. Mm. And, and, and these are the things that people like Mercola, and, and really let's consider it, uh, Mitch over at Love Food, Whole Foods, Mercola. Most of those people were thought to be nuts, you know, <laughs> hippie commune holdovers kind of deal, Jim. And even with you, your, your fluoridation and that. You, you know, you're you're on the outside of this thing. It's not, although it's becoming more and more mainstream. It's amazing the awakening that's occurring with some of these things. Yeah, I totally agree. And the fact is, you know, uh, like Mercola, when he talks about GMO foods and that, uh, the boy didn't sit on the sidelines uh, in the California thing. He put in 1.1 million dollars to help get the issue out. Uh, anybody that's willing to put in that much money 
uh, isn't just talking. They're actually taking action. Hey, Jim, and, I, want you uh, hold, I want you to hold on yeah. for just one minute. because I, I, well, Let's talk a little about GMOs because I don't think people really have a real understanding of the, of the, of the um, uh, evolution of GMOs, what it's become. Um, so if you'll hold on for a minute, we got to go to break. Dave, we're going to take a break. So let's take a break very quickly. Again, remind you that Bodies has the $5 Start Your Membership, $39.50 a month dues for three months. It's a three-month membership. It starts with a $5 enrollment, $20 card fee. That enrollment is usually $199, and the monthly dues are normally $59.50. It is our full-blown Body Coach membership with the Smart Start program, with the appointment with fitness, with our fitness on demand. Just call 672-6464. Another reminder, if you are Humana Silver Sneakers program or Florida, Florida Healthcare, we now have the ability to take care of you with our, our Fitness Express. Our Bodies Express membership is no charge to you with the great service we give. You can have a concierge service of upgrading to our body coach, which we are doing uh, also. But this is an opportunity for you to get started at Bodies and have a great, great interaction with us. So we'll be back in three minutes. Hi, this is Mark Bernier for Hendrick Honda of Daytona. At HendrickHondaDaytona.com, nobody treats you better or has a better selection, or better prices, has bigger discounts, and no one will give you more for your trade. They're at 330 North Nova Road, HendrickHondaDaytona.com, with AARP discounts, and nobody has better warranties on pre-owned vehicles. I recommend them at Hendrick Honda Daytona. Tell them that Mark Bernier sent you. This is Michael David from Seattle. I'm 51 years old, and six months ago, I started taking Andro 400 to increase my testosterone. Since then, I've lost 35 pounds of fat, and my waist went from size 38 to size 32. I have more energy, and I look and feel 20 years younger. And now, my wife tells me I have to take Andro 400. Hi, this is Ron Johnson from Utah. After 10 weeks of taking Andro 400, I lost 13 pounds, and my waist went from 36 to 33. That was eight years ago. I continue to take Andro 400 and I've maintained my weight at 172. Gained muscle and energy. I'm 63 now and feel better than I have in 30 years. Andro 400, the natural way to increase testosterone, lose belly fat, gain energy, and feel great. Try Andro 400, the safe, effective, affordable way to boost your testosterone. Go to andro400.com or call 888-400-0435. 888-400-0435. Attention, Silver Sneakers participants. Bodies Per Size Fitness in Ormond Beach is proud to be an approved fitness program provider for the Silver Sneakers program. Our Bodies Express membership is now approved for Silver Sneakers membership at no cost to you. Call 672-6464. That's 672-6464 to set an appointment for your orientation today. Also included is our new fitness on demand exercise class program please call for an appointment so we can answer your questions and introduce you to our facilities call 672-6464 to start your program and begin to experience the body's personalized fitness difference body's personalized fitness is also approved fitness provider for selected florida health care plans we look forward to improving the health and fitness of our florida health care and silver sneakers participants and take advantage of the great program and your free membership. Call 672-6464. Call 239-0033 for Fitness Friday and your host, Tasso Kiriakis. Here's Tasso. Personalized Fitness in Long Beach, Florida. And I want to thank you for coming to www.flatabsasap.com. Remember that video well, we made? About to hear a I did. I do Ellen remember Darden, one of the most renowned fitness That's that video with it. Ellen, Ellington Darden came to your club to do a, a seminar, a talk, yeah. if you will, and we videotaped it and it put it on YouTube. Guess how many views it has now? Three thousand. Four thousand and eighty-one wow. views. So. Well, you know, I, I talked to Ellington because he wrote an, uh, he wrote another book called The Fat Burning. Um, that burning something it's, it uses cold technology which mm. we talked about yeah. about four years ago three years sure. ago with that book uh for our body and he wrote a book based on some of that research and uh and we're talking we're trying to negotiate a deal to get him here to do yeah. another presentation like that sure. and to actually take put that book into use because i think it would be a great program to run hey jim i wanted to come back to you because um i, I think you know a lot of people look at this gmo and they think it well you know it's sort of like hybridization we used to cross one one plant with another and get a more hardy version cross of a plant. Cross-pollination. You know, cross-pollination. But really, the, I, the concept I think people, and I think I told the story on, my, uh, on the show about two weeks ago of a friend of mine, Jim 
riding up through Illinois on his motorcycle. And he said he used to ride down this same road, and he'd see varmints all over, and he'd see buzzards because, you know, things had been killed in the field. And you'd always see an animal run across or animals on the side. He said he saw no animals, nothing. It was barren. He said, he said in the whole trip from, from through Indiana to the tip of Illinois, he saw one buzzard, which tells you there's not a lot of wildlife activity. And, and what people don't understand is what Monsanto and these companies have done with GMOs is they basically said, look, you know, we're gonna we're gonna make this we're gonna make this plant so that it can grow it can grow better and not have disease. Okay, so not have these animals. So they inject it. Well, what what that what that plant became essentially was its own self self protecting antibiotic or pesticide and stuff. That's why you see that if you read that Consumer Report Got Milk, it talks about over 20 carcinogens, antibiotics pesticides steroids in the in, in the normal gallon of milk coming off the thing why is that coming why is lactose intolerance rising in this country because we're feeding we're feeding um, cattle GMO soy GMO grain okay which cows are grass eaters right right, right? last time I looked okay and 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 they're, they're doing they're doing all this stuff with these GMO things so now you have two types of proteins w that we know of one is uh, is uh, beta uh, beta casein beta one casein and beta two casein beta two is naturally occurring it's why lactose intolerant people can eat goat's milk cheese and not and not have a lactose flare up whereas if they drink regular milk they flare up because it's because there's been a mutation in the cow's milk to where we're getting beta one lact uh, beta one casein now and so why is that occurring because we've mutated through GMO the food source we've given them and, and given the wrong food source so now it's getting carried even further now Jim that when we start to eat GMO corn as we consume it guess what we're gonna be natural pesticides to, to insects ourselves because those trace levels of pesticides are gonna come into us the, the, and I don't think people follow the danger that's going to occur because these, and many times these pesticides, they're carcinogens. Yeah, and not only that, every cell in that corn plant, from the root to the corn to the tip, has that toxin in it, the BT toxin, when it's, uh, you know, uh, supposed to kill the grubs and that. Yeah, but it'll kill everything, right. including uh, not do so well for the people eating it. And then the other part of that is, Everything then uh, is Roundup Ready. 85% of all the GMOs are Roundup Ready, so they're sprayed and resprayed with herbicides. Roundup, glyphosate, which in the latest studies has shown to be incredibly uh, good for causing cancers. Right. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and, 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 what a lot, and then the extent of it that goes even further is I, I, I read an article the other day, and again, my buddy Jim really keeps me because he has he's retired. He's one of those few forty seven percenters that are retired and stuff, and he gets to read and stuff. And he he was reading and he was telling me about how American farming has changed, and and so he's he's doing this, and he's informing me about this book he's reading. But you know the reality of this thing is, Jim, is that what the these guys that have seeds that they've had in their family lines, and they produce these great tasting fruits and grains or whatever they produced in their own family farms. They can't use them anymore, because Monsanto. Oh no, they're contaminated by other crops. No, nearby. not that. Not that they're contaminated, Jim. They <laughs> cannot use them anymore. If Monsanto can literally come and have you arrested for not using one of their seeds, it's to that extent is what we've seen this go to now, is that that you cannot use your family grown seeds that are pure, un un GMO'd, all that type of stuff. That's what we're seeing. That's the extent of it. They're going to control it to that extent where there won't be good organic seeds available from that standpoint. So it's, it's yeah, a topic that yeah, I'd love to get Josh Axe or, or, um, or Daniel Pomp or some of these guys that are really sharp on this GMO issue. Because we, you know, when we have a state agriculture official uh, make a comment to, I think it was Mark Bernie, I heard him say, that GMO is going to increase productivity of the food that we create. <laughs> And, 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 and you're that ignorant to what's going on. Man, oh, man, it's, it's, it's frightening. It's frightening is a word of, of, of a priest friend of mine used to use about stuff. Hey, Jim, I'm sorry I got to jump off because 
I'm, uh, I've, I've got a very proud year coming up here because my nephew is going to be the uh, uh, captain of the quarterback club, and I want to talk a little bit of, of, with it about him, and he's on the line with me. So please join us next week, and, and if you ever hear that I have Pop on the show, please call in because he'd love to know there are people that are activists like you out there and, and moving in the right direction. He probably has a lot of facts and figures that you're familiar with right at his, right at his fingertips, and I appreciate the call here on Fitness Friday. Thanks. Hey, John, how you doing? Hey, Toss. How's it going, buddy? Well, John, September 8th is the day. The um, the, the applications have gone out. The uh, bills have gone out as of uh, today. They all got dumped off at the post office. Our, our members will be getting their speaker sheet in the mail. And I want to run down this lineup because it's a very impressive lineup for the Daytona Beach Quarterback Club. Uh, sure. on, se- on September 8th, we start with Lou Holtz. Lou Holtz is an ESPN announcer, but... Great motivational speaker. You know, he's one of these guys that uh, gets paid twenty five, thirty five thousand dollars to go speak at conventions like URSA and uh, you know American Insurers and stuff like that. And then there's Tony Barnhart of CBS, who is uh, anchor for their thing and does an awful lot of SEC stuff. Then we're gonna have yep. Ju- go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't want to cut you off. Go ahead, John. Yeah, he, yeah. Uh, we're actually lucky to get uh, Tony. He's, he just got picked up, I believe, um, by ABC and. Uh, he he kind of told us that he's after this this latest uh, job that he got he's he's not going to be doing any more of these clubs but he's he's committed to us so really really happy to have him I think he'll be uh, very very insightful and and then on the twenty second of September is George O'Leary the coach of uh, UCF um, and then Dante Culpepper who's a local product went to UCF played for the Minnesota Vikings uh, played played for the Miami Dolphins played for I think also a couple other teams in the league. John, I cut you off there. You want to make a comment on those yeah. guys? No, yeah. Um, really excited for both of them, especially with the year um, that Georgia Leary had yet last year. I think it would be tremendously you know, exciting to have him. I tell you what, people don't realize they were they were leading South Carolina. They lost one game last year in the regular season, or they lost one game last year yeah. overall, even in the bowl game. They were, in the game they lost, they were leading South Carolina in the third quarter going into the fourth quarter. If they went undefeated, the way things played out last year with Alabama losing, an undefeated UCF very well could have played for that national championship game. I like to get I just want to hear his opinion on that just yeah. because of you know having it, and that's assuming they would have could have should have but would have beat South Carolina who was a highly ranked team. And and that um, took a last minute drive by South Carolina to beat him. Right. Right. Oh. And you know, and, and you know, I just, uh, you know, I, and I, when I was looking through, you know, when I got the images to put on the on the flyer that we sent out, I'm sitting there and I'm going like, you know, got a lot of pictures of George O'Leary at Notre Dame, you know, because there's the whole scandal. You know, I wonder if Notre Dame's, I wonder if anybody's going to ask ask him the question. Go, hey, coach, you think Notre Dame's kicking themselves in the butt for never for not bringing? Because they've had like three coaches since he was there. And right. and here O'Leary comes out and takes a program that's absolutely nothing. And I got to tell you, their line play, their offensive line play, you know, Demo Janakis, who you know, has played played in the NFL for years and stuff, says when he looks at all the lines at the universities in the state of Florida, he says their offensive line play is absolutely the best technical line and most aggressive line play that you'll find of any of the Division One schools we have in the state of Florida. Right. right. I, I think that toss is kind of what you're getting at, and not just for George O'Leary, but but for all these guys, the really, really neat thing about being in the club is you have the opportunity to ask these guys these questions. That's I mean, right. The members can ask whatever they want. You know, we sometimes we get some really off the wall questions that, that <laughs> kind of fire back at, at at the members about. But uh, but you can ask anything. You really can, and it's kind of like a personal, your own personal like interview with them, and and all the things you've always wondered about these guys. That's the really cool thing about having these, you know, the speaker lineup with all these recognizable guys that. You you know you watch on TV on Saturdays and Sundays and you kind of always you know think to yourself I wonder what he would do in this I wonder if he's thinking about this actually we have a Q and A at the end of the speech and you can ask him whatever you want and well, uh, it's really nice it's, really well, it's, cool. it's going to go further in the Q and A because of your involvement with a lot of these guys is that you've got them actually to agree to go to the Oyster Pub or wherever we designate uh, afterwards to have uh, to sit down and watch the first half of football with us a lot of these guys are actually going to do that and and they're yep. there before they speak so you can come in you know kind of thing and and have, sure. have a great thing let me continue down the line you just jump in for any of them you know tommy bowden on october 6th who's a coach at clemson of course uh son of the great uh florida state coach bobby bowden uh doctor yep. tommy bowden is that night also toss is going to be uh kids night we have every year we have a uh, one week is kids night when you're free to bring you know your kids in um, we typically have ice cream bar for them. Um, 
you know, and, and give them some some sort of little gifts. But Tommy is going to be a, a very good, very good uh, choice of speakers for our kids' nights. So we're we're kind of happy about that as well. Yeah, and that's you know, you you went to a lot of those kids' nights as a youngster, and uh, and uh, I brought a lot of guys to the kids' night and brought my daughters to kids' nights over the years. So. Um, yeah. October 13th, we have Dr. Jerry Ponch. He's probably more known for um, for his ESPN involvement with racing, but uh, in actuality, he covered a lot of Alabama football and SEC football. Uh, yeah, and yeah. he he was here about 15 years ago. And he was really good. You know, that's, that's what I've heard. I, I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't there at his uh, particular speech, but I heard he was he was incredible. So um, we're happy to really happy to have him. Well, I, I think two wild card ones are going to be that could be probably the most entertaining ones of the, if we get the true personality of, of the next two is Keith Brookings, who is a fiery guy when he plays. He's a friend of yours and uh, played with the Atlanta Falcons, Denver Broncos, Dallas Cowboys, just recently retired last year. But, you know, if if he he and, and the next speaker, uh, Jesse Palmer, I think can be some of the, some of the funniest speakers as far as stories they'll bring to the table because I think they're sort of they're still fresh out of the league and they're so connected in there that, that and they're young enough that they're gonna bring some cool stories to the to the table. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean with Keith too, he's he, like it's like you said, he's fresh out of the league. He's a guy who just got just got done playing. You know, the only reason that we're able to have him is is because I kinda corralled him and, and kinda use a little leverage on him that I need him down here to speak at the club. But uh, you know, he his, his last year in the league was Peyton's first year at at Denver, so he he played in that, and you know, along with Peyton, so he can give you some real insightful things. You know, any questions about the Broncos, you know, even in today, or or Peyton, you know, that you may have. He he tells me all kinds of stories, you know, about Peyton. He told me uh, last the, the year he was in Denver a few years ago, he um, he was at a Halloween party for the team, and Peyton showed up in a. Uh, in a Elvis uh, costume, that was a real Elvis costume that he had purchased somewhere <laughs> along the line, and uh, he sent me a couple pictures of it. And it was pretty, it was pretty dang funny. So that, that just is... little things like that that are, uh, you know, that are that are really cool to hear. You know, some some real life stories as opposed to edited stories that you'll get across the TV screen or yeah. something like that. And, and you know, they, uh, when he was with Dallas, <clears throat> he was all, you know, he was, he was a fiery. He was one of the fiery leaders as linebacker. Right? In fact, let's hope Dallas doesn't get so depleted they go try and pick him back up because they've got some injuries. But the, his, one of the announcers asked, he says, "Do your kids? Because he had the black, you know, he had the black uh, eye paint paint look like like uh, road warriors and the fake wrestling." And so, and so uh, they go, "Hey, do your kids ever like see you on TV?" He goes, "Oh no, my wife doesn't let let them watch me until the game's going." <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, and the, right. and then Jesse Palmer who actually he's a great ESPN announcer, played at the University of Florida. But when you look to pick up his picture, he's got more damn pictures from the Bachelorette because he was on the very first season of The Bachelor uh, than 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 anything else. It's like you see him with all these hot chicks and stuff like this. So, you know, I'm sure that someone's going to ask him a question along the way about the Bachelorette program that he was on or the Bachelor no program. No doubt. It's, it's <laughs> funny how your kind of your path turns out. I mean, he, he was playing in the league, was a backup for the most part. Um, and, you know, so I played with Jesse at, at Florida. But then he, he spent, I think, three or four years with the Giants. And, uh, you know, he kind of retired um, from the Giants and, um, you know, went on that show, The Bachelor, and he got – Kind of a second wind, and I think that kind of spiraled him to get into. You know, he got used to speaking on TV, and I think that's you know kind of pressed him to do like play-by-play -play stuff. And then now he's one of the biggest guys yeah. out there. I mean, he, for the ESPN, and then, he's one and of the biggest guys doing the SEC show together. That they, so he is one of the biggest guys out there. Yeah. Besides. Yeah, and he's better. he's on College Football Live every week on ESPN. People who maybe don't know, and then and then we come to a Hall of Fame football player with Kellen Winslow Sr., who is the athletic director at Florida A&M University. Um, played with the San Diego Chargers. People remember him in that um, in that Miami Dolphins overtime game that, that that just went back and forth years ago. And then not so fast, my friend. We have Lee Corso to end up as the tradition is. And hopefully we will have enough new members to have Turkey Night back at the quarterback club. I think we're very close to the number. But uh, people should realize that, you know, and, I, and John, the dues are 385. Is that correct? Correct. And uh, so 385 is the dues. And uh, it's 10 meetings where you get great food. We're going to be at the Daytona Beach Plaza uh, and Resort. It's going to be a great. It's going to be a great year this year. Uh, all you got to do is go to dbquarterback.com, 
and um, you can download your application or you can call John or I. You can reach me through 672-6464. Or John, do you have a phone number that they can contact? Uh, yeah, Toss, there's a couple links to get on there. Daytona, I, I use most often DaytonaQB.com. Um, there's, there's, I think, two or three different links that go to that same site. But yeah. uh, DaytonaQB.com is the, is the one I use. And there's a couple links there. Um, just click on members, and once you click on members, a little drop-down box will say member application, and then um, you just click on the membership application. You can print that up and mail it in. You can call one of us, you know, get a hold of us and just give it to us. Um, but, you, you know, Toss, in, you know, our membership committee is expecting to reach that membership cap. Once that membership cap is reached, our bylaws don't allow us to take any more members. We have to start a waiting list. So I would... I would anybody that's actually interested. I would promote them to get it in as soon as possible. Um, and the other thing, possibly we're going to face this year is because of the speaker lineup that we have, our guest list, our, our, our guests to the club are going to be probably limited for several speakers because of the capacity right. issues that's we're, that we're going to have. I mean, the interest that we're getting right now is is unbelievable. So, like I said, I would. If you are indeed interested, I would go ahead and get on that site and, and get, get everything filled out and send in a check just to ensure your spot because that cap more than likely is going to be reached this year and we'll have to instill the, the waiting list. And as you remember, Toss, back, back when you joined, I, don't, I mean, the waiting list I'm, was... I was, on, I was on a waiting list for four years. My, bro right. my brother put me on the waiting list when I went off to graduate school. When I came home and started working, it was another year and a half, and I, I remember getting that letter. It says... Uh, there has been a spot made available by by uh, someone passing away. <laughs> you can become a quarterback club member. I was excited, man. I got that check in right away. John, you might want to check the website. I believe on the, the website does say three fifty, but it is three eighty five uh, yeah. on your on your letter. If you if uh, I, I, before I forget to tell you that. Um, okay. And so I, you know, I, I hope people will will come out. This is, listen, this is a great thing. You know, like we're gonna get updates. You know, every every week WNDB is gonna be out doing football games. Like they start on the 29th of August with mainland demand uh, the land over Spec Martin, uh, and every week they have a football game at least at least once a week. Sometimes they go Thursday and Friday. But w you know, the thing about it is we honor the athletes. Uh, Pete Wakeman does a great job of being the high school liaisons. We have a scholarship program that has a website that gets all the statistics from these athletes up there, so smaller schools can recruit them. It's not one of those kind of things. It's not you know it's not another service organization you go to, and every week there's a pancake cookout. Listen, this is what it is. It is what it is. You come on Mondays. The team has done all the work. You come in there. You have great hors d'oeuvres that are sponsored by some of the, the businesses that are in in the group. Uh, we have a great time. We have a fun time. There's great camaraderie. You'll have groups of guys that you'll sit with, and then and then you get a great dinner. After we eat dinner, um, people hang out and talk to the people, and, and then we'll go over and we'll go to the Oyster Pub. Some people go to other places. Some people stay in the motel there, and we go and watch the football game. And if you love football, you're going to love being a part of this group because it's, it's not about doing, you know, for lack of a better term, I don't want to sound um, – we do a lot of community service, but it's not about that. We we do that under the auspices of how the group functions, and the guys that run the like the high school liaisons, they run the recognition program. You get to stay caught up on who beat who in in high school football, and you get to you get to the, to have a lot of fun with guys. So I hope people will take the opportunity to get involved with us at quarterback club this year. Yep. So. Well, John, I, I'm looking forward to a great year. It's going to be a fun year. I mean, some of these speakers that you have, you know, uh, the personalities of, of, you know, the Lee Corsos and the Brookings and, and some of these guys. And Jerry Ponch, as I said, was uh, 15 years ago. He was very entertaining. I think there's going to be a lot of openness. And, you know, I always have enjoyed. I, I remember I paid $850 for a DVD um, or back then it was a VHS of Lou Holtz giving, giving probably a very similar speech to what he'll give to us. And uh, and he'll talk about football and these guys will just I mean he's got stories to tell that are great stories so yeah, I hope we're super honored to have uh, Coach Olds come um, really really excited about him I, I, he's doing the club a huge favor um, by, by coming and uh, so really I mean just just to see him I would pay the dues yeah. I mean, that's worth it. Okay, John, thanks very much. I want to remind people, $5 starts your membership at Bodies Personalized Fitness. Get your membership started. Three-month commitment, $39.50 a month. It's a great opportunity to see the body's difference. Have a great weekend. God bless. And guess what? I get to go back to work on Monday for two hours a day. Right, How about man. that? Woohoo! Excited. 
So have a great weekend. God bless. Enjoy your family and have a great time. and AM 1150 WNDB Daytona Beach. Daytona's morning news station. Locally owned and operated by Southern Stone Communications.